Welcome back to Way of the Wrench. Uh, today we are going to be designing our control panel for our Raspberry Pi arcade cabinet. Uh, we want something that looks amazing and is fun to play on. So grab a coffee, grab a root beer, let's go. So we're going to be designing our control panel from scratch and we've got a lot of things to think about uh, but the two big things we have to think about are form and function so form best way to think about it is what does it look like is it appealing do i want to go play on it because it looks amazing and then we've got function which is basically um, how does it work how do i interact with this what are the ergonomics does it feel comfortable etc so these two things we need to think about when we're designing this. Um, thank you to Mr. Schultz from BCIT for helping me learn them. Um, so the very first thing we're talking about is how high off of the ground should the control panel top surface be? If it's um, too low, then I'm going to be hunching over. And if it's too high, it's going to be uncomfortable because I'm playing up on my face. And um, who's going to be playing this? So my daughters and, and small kids, I want to be able to play on this. So I'm probably going to be trying to lean down to more of the 36, 37 inch. Um, and then if I design this properly, uh, where I've got a removable control panel, you could literally space it up uh, to go higher if I wanted to. So uh, we are going to try to figure out a height that works out well for us. And I've got the perfect thing for that. So first up, I've got a tape measure. Uh, I'm going to use this table to start with. And first off, I need a baseline measurement. So we're at 32 inches. So that's way too low. So uh, I just need something to temporarily make it a, the height of the control panel and see if it feels okay. So I've got a piece of foam core and I need to stack it up. So I'm gonna just grab some stuff around the shop that uh, can do that. So textbooks, eh? Books, they're actually coming useful. That will give us 37. And then I'm basically just imagining I've got a joystick and my six buttons. Can I pull off my dragon punches and my hadoukens? Uh, okay. Uh, or does it feel a little low or high? Uh, honestly, this feels actually pretty good. Um, I'm not leaning over. I'm not hunched up. I've got a little bit of slack in my arms. Um, this actually doesn't feel too bad. So that height right there, it's about 39. And this for me, I'm a taller guy, so this feels a little low. So 37, so at least another inch, but even that 39 seemed okay. That actually feels pretty good to me. That's 38 inches. So that's kind of right in smack in the middle of that 36 to 40 inches. So uh, that seems like a good height for the control panel. So now we've got the height of the control panel figured out. We want to figure out if we want any angle on this. Now I'm a fan of having a little bit of sloped angle there. I think it looks a little better. It looks a little bit more appealing to me as opposed to just a flat tabletop that like you see everywhere. Um, so what I look online Nobody makes them more than 10 degrees of an angle. Like nobody wants to play on something like this because your, your wrists are going to be cocked up at an angle and you'll be uncomfortable. So everyone's got it um, between zero degrees, which I think is boring, to about 10 degrees. Um, so play with that angle. For me, I think 10 degrees works really good. I don't feel any kind of uh, issues with my wrists at weird angles and it uh, gives a nice look to it. So next thing up is uh, figuring out how wide that control panel is or 
Another way of looking at it is how far away are you watching from the screen? Now, because I don't have a little dinky 17 inch CRT original screen, I went a little bigger. Um, naturally, we have to be standing back further. Otherwise, it's gonna be like trying to play a game with your eyes right up to it. So uh, when I looked online, the minimum recommended viewing distance for watching a 32 inch TV is four feet. That is a long ways away. 48 inches is literally back here. So we are not gonna make it on our arcade control panel that wide. That would be absolutely ridiculous. However, if we're looking at um, regular arcade cabinets, the control panels are anywhere from 10 inches, 12 inches away. And if I'm playing that close, um, I'm gonna to be too close to that. I have to be looking left, right to see what's going on on the screen. Uh, so basically all you're gonna do is play with the distance and I highly recommend hooking up a Raspberry Pi or at a minimum putting a TV on here or uh, some kind of image to look at and figure out where you feel comfortable to play with and think longer term. You know, you're gonna be a couple hours here playing games. Uh, so for me, 20 inches seems like a good number. So that's where my body can sit up against it and I would be playing like this. So now that I have that dimension here, uh, I have something to figure out for the rest of it. Now, obviously this is going to be at least 32 inches wide because the TV is actually 32 inches wide, but I'm not gonna put it flush with the edge of the TV. That'll look a little ridiculous. So figure out the width for me, I kind of just went two inches on either side, a little bit of overlap, which makes it look a little better. Uh, so that's 36. So for me, that's 20 inches wide, 36 inches wide uh, long. So now that we've got our basic dimensions of what we want our control panel to roughly look like, it's so 36 inches wide, 20 inches deep from the monitor. Uh, you can see we've got quite a big space, so awesome for lots of artwork, uh, room for joysticks for one player and two player, and a nice big size for trackball in the middle and all our um, insert coin and one player and two player starts up here. So lots of room, lots of room for expansion for spinners if we want to put in as well. But this is super, super boring. Um, so at this point, it's basically up to you what you want to do and what you want to make it look like. Some recommendations, uh, get some cardstock, some kind of thicker paper, lay this out and then just have some fun with it. Um, figure out what you think looks good. Um, measure out and find the center and start laying it out in different ways that seem appealing to you because paper is dirt cheap and simple to work with. Um, try a couple examples, one, two, three different versions of maybe a curved front on the control panel, maybe you like angles. Um, it's really quite quick and easy to draw it out, cut it up and see if you like it. Now I'm not going to bore you with that, uh, I'm just going to show you my next version that I did after about three or four versions of what I felt was the all right, so this is what I came up with after a couple different tries. I kind of found that I liked the use of angles in, on the front and the sides to kind of split it up. Um, I used kind of like the rule of thirds for using camera shots and angles um, where you've got the picture in roughly one third of the, uh, the shot and you've got the immediate background right there in another third and then the sky the rest of the scene and the other third so it kind of helps balance it out and everything looks a little symmetrical so what i did is since it's a i want it to look like a two-player cabinet um you've got your two-player area here that are slightly at an angle just so that you don't have to be shoulder to shoulder a little bit of kind of um angle from each other nice even side in the center so basically it's 12 inches of of center space 12 inches over here and 12 inches over there uh, so slight angle there and then basically almost the same angle just a little bit longer from the very edge of the 36 inches and it tapers into uh, one inch overlap uh, from the actual TV so it's um, 34 inches at the inset there so just a slight angle back just to make it give it a little kind of sleeker kind of fan look to it and rounded off the corners here um, you can basically just grab anything in the shop that's round or something in your kitchen, like a, a soup can or something like that, and you can just use that to um, put in the curve you want. This one here, there's not much, so it's just going to be basically a straight. Um, now from this part, uh, so you, you can see that I've, I've drawn a center line to help me lay out all my angles and shots. I've also used this, since this is going to be the top of my control panel, to start figuring out where I'm going to have the rest of my control panel stuff. So these lines here 
uh, are going to be one inch. So there's a one inch overhang of the top of the control panel from the actual box where everything's going to be held. Um, so I think that overhang will actually give it a little bit of look, um, look quite a bit better. And so then this is the front panel. And then rather than just making it a rectangular box, which also would look pretty silly underneath this cool front, I kind of just kept it the same and went in an inch. So it's going to be a little bit tougher um, to do this because this is all going to be at a 10 degree angle. So all of these pieces have to have a 10 degree angle on it uh, so that it slopes properly. So this one, not bad. Just tilt the tilt saw, uh, the table saw angle on the blade to 10 degrees and do a cut. Same thing with the back there. These ones are not going to be too bad because we can basically mark at the end back there and then the end here and just draw a straight line and cut it on a bandsaw. This one's a little bit tricky because it's kind of compound. It's 10 degrees this way, but it's also going to be a little bit of an angle because it's a little bit different here. Not very much, but um, so this will be a little bit trickier, but we'll figure that one out. All right, so the next thing, now that we've kind of figured out roughly what the inside box dimensions will be, because I've literally drawn in the 5 eighths thick uh, for the MDF, so the lines there. I now have my inner dimensions of my box and I can make sure that everything I've putting into this has to fit within those dimensions. So the nuts on the backside of the buttons and the backside of the controller sticks, everything's got to fit inside there. So it's really good that once you got the profile drawn out, you can have the box all figured out with your, your overlap so it looks good. No overlap up there because that's going to just sit flush right against the cabinet where the monitor is. Um, so that's good. And I've drawn all of these pieces out too and so that I can accurately measure these and I can build myself a cut list. So our next video when we go to start cutting our pieces out for the control panel, I can make myself a cut list, take it to the shop and go ahead and cut my MDF. So I've gone ahead and done that for all those pieces. Um, I will cut the top control panel just the 36 uh, 36 by 20 wide and we'll do the angles after and then the bottom of the control panel is basically one inch in on the sides there except for the back so that's on my cut list now that I've got that figured out uh, the next thing is starting to lay out where all my buttons and things go so which is kind of cool um, I came across a website during my research um, called slagcoin.com I'll put the link down in the description below um, a lot of people are using it and I, I see why because you basically can go on their website and start printing off or looking at different kind of different uh, layouts for the buttons and for joysticks and they have a really really good write-up on why you would want these so there's different um, layouts based off of ergonomic design because when you look at your fingers they are not all in the same space there's kind of an arc to them and so that's the idea about these arc and spacing for the buttons and then this is where your joystick would be so uh, you can look at those and find out which one you like or if you're trying to copy another kind of um, setup from another arcade cabinet such as Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat they'll, they'll have that stuff there now really cool is they've got all these dimensions here so uh, it seems really awesome that you can be able to just print it off Maybe it's something I did, maybe it isn't, but when I printed mine off right off of the website, I noticed that these dimensions they're showing us were off a little bit, uh, enough that I thought it needed to be tweaked. So I took the time and I zoomed in on the files to make the file picture bigger, and then when I printed them off, I just kept scaling it up until the dimensions shown were actually that dimension when I put a vernier caliper on it. So now these are all accurate, and I will share these on the um, descriptions below or at the end of the build so that you guys can print these out and they should be full size, ready to go. So uh, there's one player. There's two player. And then where I bought my trackball uh, was from Holland Computers. So I went to their website and printed off basically a data sheet or a drawing for it. And I was able to print it out. And same thing, I had to play with the uh, zooming in and out, but make sure these dimensions are exactly what they are and it has a little label here on the part two as well saying that it has to go to the monitor and so now i can use that to figure out where i want to place my trackball and then basically what i did is i printed off a couple extras of these sheets so i had just individual buttons and so what i'm kind of thinking i might go with is uh, select start if you're playing like Nintendo start games or if it's arcade it would be basically insert coin and one player start insert coin two player start and so that'll probably be somewhere something like that 
And then, like I said, this leaves me lots of room in here to put in future spinners or extra joysticks for games like Smash TV, which is so awesome. Uh, and then lots of room for artwork in this. So at this point, take your time, figure out where you want things, and then essentially once you've got this figured out and exactly how you want it, you know, check your spacing, so you make sure everything looks even, uh, you can basically tape these down. And when you get ready, you can use this as a template to basically uh, use an awl or a center punch to transfer hole locations, and then you can drill all these things through. Uh, other things I did print is I looked up the Sanwa mounting tabs as well. Same thing, played with the printing so that these numbers were exactly the dimension. And so that is the center point of the joystick hole, but we also need the mounting holes for the joysticks as well. So play around with your display. You can figure out exactly where everything is, make it nice and centered and perfect. And then taper down and make sure it looks good. And then you've got a perfect template for your drilling and your laying out of your holes. Um, also, what makes this great is to make sure that you are away from the edges so that everything will fit in here. So right now, looking at this, this is way too far away. So I will probably have to trim that down and bring it closer to the edge like that. Alrighty, guys, that's going to be a wrap to this video. I'm trying to keep these videos short and sweet for you guys, yet packed full of information so that you guys feel comfortable enough to design and build your own arcade cabinets. Uh, I feel really good about what we did today. We've got our control panel figured out where our buttons are going to go. It's starting to look really good. And we have a cut list for our parts to actually cut this out in wood for our control panel. So I'm actually really super stoked about our next episode. Um, if you have any questions about what we talked about today, uh, just put a question down in the comment and I will get back to you as soon as possible so that you can get your stuff going. Um, I would like to thank you guys for watching. Uh, it's pretty awesome. This, this channel's only been up a couple months and we're already at 80 subscribers. Uh, I feel the love coming in, you guys. So uh, keep it up. If you liked what you saw today, please click like. Uh, and if you haven't already, subscribe and click the post notification bell so that you get uh, notified whenever we have new videos hitting the floor. All right, take it easy. Thank you.